Namaste everyone. In this video, we are going to see a problem of analysis on a beam using ANSYS. We'll be using the newer interface which is called as Burr Workbench. And the experiment is about structural analysis on a cylindrical beam. So first, either double click on this static structural or drag and drop it here in the project schematic. As soon as that is done, you can see you, can, you have seven steps that you need to complete. First step has already been selected. Next is selection of the engineering data, that means the materials. You can check out what materials are included by right clicking and clicking edit. Click on engineering data resources and you can go to general materials to see what materials are included. You can see structural steel has been included with the bookmark uh, being the symbol of that. Let us close this because that is the material we'll be using in this experiment. Next, we need to define geometry. Right click on it and choose new space claim geometry. Wait till the space claim geometry interface loads. Once it loads, you will see interface like this. Close this. Choose circle option from here. Click at the origin and press 10 enter from the keyboard. Then press escape and click on pull. While doing the pull operation, you have to be careful. First, you have to click on the button pull, then highlight this circular area. And once it is highlighted, you just need to press and drag it. Now you can see it is highlighted and some yellow arrows are appearing. I just need to click and drag it. We should not leave the left click button which we have pressed for dragging purpose. Without leaving it, we'll have to feed what is the height we need. So let me press 100 from the keyboard and press enter. Only after the height is finalized should we leave the left click button. If we don't do this, the height will be selected based on the dragging alone. Now that the geometry has been defined, there is no need to save it. It's already saved. You can just close it or minimize it. I'll just go with close. That will bring us back to the ANSYS workbench interface. And we see that geometry has been defined. The green tick mark being the symbol of it. Now right click on the model base and choose update. Wait for some time till the model updates. You can see the process by clicking on this button called show progress to see how much it has progressed. After update, you will see a green tick mark in front of model space, which means it is now ready. Now we have to right click on it and choose edit. Wait for some time till the design manager module loads. Upon loading, this kind of window will be visible. While you may not see the object that you have modeled, in order to see it, you have to click on zoom to fit, or you can press F7 uh, as a shortcut from the keyboard. You can see that when we clicked on update, several steps were already completed. Like the geometry was imported, mesh was created. If you want to change the meshing, you can go for sizing here at the bottom and you can see that here course object has been selected. You have three options overall. Medium will increase the meshing. After changing this option, you will have to again click on update and the meshing will be regenerated. You can see now that the meshing is much more finer. Now we have to define the boundary conditions, which we have to do under static structural. Right click on it, go for insert and choose fixed support. Let's rotate it a little. Then you have to select the bottom face. After doing this, click here apply in the geometry section. It will show one face as selected and the fixed support will appear in the navigation menu here on the left and a tag will be attached here on the face. Now it's time for us to define the load. Let's again right click on the static structural, go for insert, force. Let's apply the force on the top face. Select the face 
and click apply in the geometry section once again you can see a face is selected the force has appeared here and the force is shown here but still there is a question mark here because we have not defined how much magnitude is there for the force there are two ways of defining the force one is by using a vector wherein we'll have to define a direction as well that can be defined by using any edge or face let us go with components for now we can see we can define the x y and z components of the force we want to apply on this face we will apply a force of 10000 newtons in x direction let's apply and press enter that completes the step of defining all the boundary conditions you can see all the boundary conditions have appeared here but solution is still showing a yellow flash which means it is yet to be uh, updated before going for solution we will have to add uh, some reports to our solution which means we have to define what exactly it is that we want to analyze for this experiment we will analyze the total deformation total equivalent strain or 1 minus strain and 1 minus stress we can see all three values have been added and they all show a yellow update button over here now click on solution and click on solve it will take some time to solve and when it is ready the results will be added here now you can see that green tick marks have appeared here in place of question mark which means all the solutions have been obtained let's go ahead and see what the solutions are click on the total deformation and you can see the total deformation has appeared here if you click here on the graph and click on the play button it will show in animation how the deformation is occurring same way you can check out what is the strain acting for this experiment we can see that the strain is maximum at the base here for this side fiber and the opposite side fiber the force is acting on the x direction located by this and the innermost and the outermost fibers are going to experience stress whereas the middle middle fiber will be in the neutral fiber and it will not undergo any stress or strain so you can see the stress and strain both diagrams are showing us a similar result whereas when we go for deformation maximum deformation is happening at the top and hence the top is red while the bottom is blue so that's it for this experiment in the next one we'll take up another cross section and do similar analysis thank you